Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Now Jesus stood before the governor and questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are But he did not answer any word, so the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus called the Christ? For he knew that he was out of envy that they handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then wait, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? And they all said, Crucify him. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look at yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed on his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink, means with gall, but when he has t- t- tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. They sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revol- revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads, saying, You who can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. From the noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This is one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in the wine, and putting it on the reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earthquake, rocks were split, tombs were opened, 
and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the man with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance, but followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor was still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, unless the disciples come and steal him and say to the people, he has been raised from the dead. This last impostor would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best as you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maglingkod <coughs> antanan. We reflect on the meaning of suffering because today we reflect on the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ starting with his triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem. Nga, uh, nga nagaantos ang tao. Nga, ah, nga may pagantos. Ano inyo sabat? It's a mystery. But I can offer you at least four reasons based on the gospel, based on the Bible. Number one, Suffering is the result of man's free choice. God is love and we cannot fully love without combining it with our human freedom to make our own choice. Because there's no true love without freely choosing it. And God will not violate our free will by forcing us to love Him. God tells us what He wants us to do, but He leaves us to choose what we want. Some people choose to do evil things and they use their freedom against God. Thus we are the ones that is creating the mess that we are living in. So that's the reason man suffers because of his wrong choice. May mga asawa nga nagasakripisyo kay wrong choice ang bana. Damo nga pangaluyag, ti amo gituyag in pili. Meme mo. Kaya saper ka? Hindi mo na choice. Because you love. 
And because of love, you choose. And sometimes your choice is not the best. So we suffer because we are free. Computers do not suffer. Robots don't suffer because they don't have the choice. That's why if you want to exercise your freedom, prepare to suffer. If you don't want to suffer, then don't use your freedom. Blame everything on God. Second reason, suffering is the result of sin. One's own sin and someone else's sin. The decision that we make has always a consequence or consequences. Anger, pride, greed, arrogance, selfishness have their consequences. Sin results in broken relationships and unhappiness. That's why we suffer because of our sins. So not, don't put blame on God. The cause of your suffering is your sin and my sin. Di ng mga broken relationships, di in, di in ang halalin ini tanan ng lani ay sang buot sa Dios, sa imo, sa akon kay proud kita. Kung kaysa hindi sa akon, sa imo man, kay hubog ka, bungguan mo ako, nangawat ka, kurap, irresponsible, parents hindi responsible, hindi bata lang nila ila bata, tapos bayaan, o oh, sino basulon mo sina Diyos? Hindi man mabaso lang bata, kundi basulon mo ang responsibility ng parents. Tapos may nag sila. Sometimes, leaders of the church, priests, Paris priests, sorry, sometimes leaders of our government, War and political agenda, starvation or famine due to injustice and equal distribution of resources, civil war, adultery, theft, unloving parents, drunk people, murderer, and so on and so forth. Sometimes you don't want to talk about sin, but sin causes pain and suffering in this world. So, free choice, that's the first cause of suffering. And sin is the second result, our second cause. The third cause of suffering is it's a means God uses to show us that something is wrong in this world. God in his infinite wisdom sometimes uses pain to show us that something isn't quite right, that something is wrong in this world. This world is not perfect. Some people have become used to sin for we always see around, sin around, and they become callous and incapable of sympathy with the poor due to selfish desires and they've never thought about the reality of death. Suffering reminds us that we are living in a fallen world and that sin brought destruction to us, to our life and to the world. Thus pain shows us that something is wrong in the world we live in. In coronavirus, something is wrong in this world. This reminds us that this world needs a healer and God is the only one that can heal the world. That's why we suffer because we forget that we are not God but creatures.
ti din gidasta ini ang coronavirus. Dabot na kita sa bulan, kagay sa Mars. Sa gamay gamay nga virus, hindi natin dali-dali pa tayo. Bento na kita sa mga skyscraper. Kami nagalulupad ng mga metal sa gua. Mga military armaments. Boom! Coronavirus. Gasala kita. Because this is a reminder that we are in this fallen world. Second to the last reason. Suffering also makes us see the sufferings of other people and to see also that a lot of good is also in the world. That's why when we see suffering, it reminds us of our sinfulness but it reminds us also of the goodness of other people. And in times of crisis, nagagwa ang goodness ng tao, generosity, solidarity. That's why ginaalaw sa Diyos ang suffering. Kaya may kuwaon siya nga maayo sa sini. Ano na, I do not know. Siya lang kabalo. Because we do not know the future. Basta kung mag-cause ang Diyos ang pain, wala yung ginaalaw, nga wala sang growth na madala. Kung kita, tawo kita, we cause pain on other people. And we do not desire for their growth. Pero ang Diyos, who is loving, once ni allow yung suffering and pain, may purpose siya. Nga, nga sakit magbata, how? nakabata na ka wala. Kaya may matawo na bata. That's why ang gakos na sang pain, kaya may deliver ka nga life. That's why basta may pain gani, may opportunity for delivery. Last reason, and this is the very most important reason for us Christians. Suffering is God's way to defeat sin and to restore people's lives and heal them. Let me explain. This is from Ratzinger. The last one is from Ratzinger. By giving, how? By giving a particular element to suffering, which we call love. That's why when suffering is accompanied by love, it becomes salvific. This is the secret. That's why we have the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ because He's full of love. And the suffering now is no longer a cause of sin but a cause of salvation. Why? Because of love. Duha ka tao nag-suffer. Ang isa wala love. Useless iya suffering. Ang isa nag-suffer for the beloved. Salvific ang iya suffering. The true way by which man becomes human is love. It is only through loving that we become more mature, more understanding of others, more human. But love without suffering is not genuine because love demands an element of self-sacrifice. So if love makes us mature, love demands suffering and pain for the beloved. That's why love which makes you mature requires self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice entails suffering. Because love demands an element of self-sacrifice, of self-denial, and pain for the sake of the beloved. Thus, suffering is a process to which we mature. So it's no longer the cause of sin. It's now a cause of maturity, spiritual maturity. God never allows pain without a purpose. 
Isaiah 66, 9. In the same way, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. He will not get rid of the pain because we need it in order to grow. But he will help us get through the pain and rise from it stronger, wiser, victorious. So this is the last reason and a Christian reason why we have pains and suffering in this world. Because we love. When you sin, you will suffer. When you love, you too will suffer. It's better to suffer because of love and not because of sin. That's why Jesus suffered, not because he sinned, but because he loved. And therefore, if you want to love, be prepared. You will suffer in this world. Amen. God the Father, we continue to suffer because we are in this imperfect world. Because we are sinful. Because we are forgetful. But most of all, because we love and we are open to suffer because we choose to love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.